another female that I think about is Maria Canellis. She brought up the term diva in a recent interview on Fightful Select. And in that interview, she talked about, we should bring back the Divas Championship. And that term diva has such a negative stigma behind it. You can't wrestle, they can't talk, they're interchangeable. I'm pretty sure you saw that AJ Lee promo. But you are someone who's spent her entire career being a ballet, being a diva. So do you believe that divas can still work in this climate of female wrestling? Yes, and I have no idea why anyone ever thought that that was a negative term. A diva, I understand that that word can be used like, okay, so someone comes in and they demand things that are diva. A diva to me was a very empowering term. I would never be in wrestling if it wasn't for the WWE divas. And I don't even mean that in terms of matches. With all due respect, I had this conversation against to promote God TV with Tori Wilson is a great episode. And I said, I would never have been in wrestling if it was just serious wrestlers. With all due respect to AJ Lee and, and the ones that are sort of more casually dressed and they're not super sparkly and glamorous, all due respect, those aren't my type of girls. They're just right. not. I wanted to be a Tory. I wanted to be a Sunny. I wanted to be doing the modeling shoots and, and doing the uh, interviews and doing the managing and things like that. So the fact that we can't look at that period of time and go, there were some great people in that. You know, even the diva search for it. Look how many people. We just said this to um, Michelle McCool, our next episode is with Michelle McCool. And I said, gosh, people forget how many great talents came from the diva search. Maria, Michelle McCool, so many great ones. Layla. And, you know, yeah, did it get a little out of hand with like gravy boat kind of, or, you know, gravy matches and jello? Sure. But I, when I wanted to wrestle at all, I wanted to be in an evening gown match. I wanted to be in a lingerie match. I wanted to exert this sort of powerful sexuality, this feminism that I thought was really, really empowering. So it's a shame for me to hear that people are like, oh, when they call them diva, doesn't like it. Now, did I like that the belt was a butterfly? I thought that was a little literal and stupid, personally. But... The term diva to me was very empowering. So I find that really interesting that people have such, you know, a, a vitriolic heat against that term diva. That was my era. And because I didn't want to physically wrestle, I was like, these are my girls. Trish Stratus, for example, I've had this conversation with her. When she was a manager managing TNA, that's when I really connected. When she became a serious wrestler, and I mean this with all due respect, I was kind of like, mm, I can't relate as much. Lita, I can't relate as much. I didn't want to be a... A, a, a very seriously taken female wrestler. And I think that's great that they have that, but that wasn't personally what I wanted to do. So the fact that we can't have both now, I felt like, I feel like it's very um, anti-feminist in the sense that feminism, my friend, is about, I'm about to preach here, is about having a freedom of choice. And if my choice wasn't to be an athletic, super serious wrestler, and my choice was to be sexy, be one of kind of the, you know, the diva types, that's my choice. And feminism is about supporting women's choices. So you can't sit there and say that if you weren't a serious wrestler, you didn't contribute to the business because people like Sonny, Sable, Tori Wilson, Candice Michelle, these women were my idols. So I, I really find it interesting when people have such an issue about the Divas era, because if there was no Divas era, I would have lost interest immediately.